If we're honest about it, we are a little bit guilty at looking at cars from the past through rose-tinted spectacles. But in fairness, probably the most guilty party of them all are the manufacturers themselves. And over time, they have brought back some cars from the dead, some with some success, others maybe not so much. BMW's modern interpretation of the Mini, Fiat 500, examples of ones that really worked. Ones that didn't work so well? Well, I'm looking at you, Ford Thunderbird. And maybe another one is Volkswagen's modern Beetle. You see, despite driving actually not too badly because it was based on the Mark IV Golf, it never really ignited the sort of same sort of passion that the original car actually did. The one that everyone wanted, however, was a modern version of the Type 2, the camper van. And it just sort of evoked memories of the Beach Boys and parties on the surf and sort of like the summer of love and all things like that. And they have teased us over the years with what they might do. But all that teasing has now stopped because this is what they can do. It is, of course, the new Volkswagen ID Buzz. But here's the question. Is it going to be just another retro pastiche that's not really going to capture the spirit of the original? Or is the new Buzz light years ahead? Welcome to another road test review full of puns. Welcome to the new Volkswagen ID Buzz. And of course, if it needs to be said, welcome to Auto EV. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear. Brilliant. <laughs> now, before we go into this week's road test review of Volkswagen's new ID Buzz, it is, of course, that time for I ask you to make sure that you are subscribed to the Auto EV channel. Now, once you've done that, please press the little bell button that's down below because then that way you'll be notified of when our next video goes live. After you've watched the review, if you do like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and leave us some comments down below. Let us know your thoughts on the cars that we review, such as the Volkswagen ID Buzz, and of course on the channel itself. Now, Volkswagen's ID range. Now, they've showed obviously quite a few now. We've had the ID3, which they said was the sort of third pillar in its people's car after the, the Beetle and the Golf. And then we had the one that they said was going to be the big seller, the ID4, because that was a global car. It was built in many territories as well as being sold across the world. And then they chased the sort of the, the, the up and coming market with the ID5, that sort of coupe like SUV. So, but none of really sort of grabbed us and sort of like gone wow with it but this is the cool one this is the one that could be sort of like Volkswagen's well as I would call it it's TT moment so irrespective of anything else it's how the car looks it's how it's perceived is going to determine whether or not it's a success for the brand and given how dare I suggest lukewarm the reception has been for some of the other IDs it has got its work cut out for it but of course, here at Auto EV, we're not swayed by design, we're not swayed by coolness and things like that. We need to deliver the verdict that actual EV buyers trust to deliver on whether or not we think it's worthy of your money. But we do have to start with styling because, as I say, this is the cool one. This is the one that's going to really, really sort of like ignite people's passion for the brand again, or certainly that's Volkswagen's hope. And it's going to do that by looking exactly like this. Now, what I have to say about this design is I am quite pleased that they haven't gone down the sort of retro look in some respects. There's enough cues there to make you think of the old Volkswagen campers, but they haven't sort of like looked at the old split screen and just gone, we'll just do a modern version of that. They haven't done that. They've given the Buzz its own unique identity. And I think it's a real success. You've got this quite kind of bluff looking front here. Now this car's wearing the optional two-tone paint and obviously we'll talk about options in the pricing section. But that's kind of really the only sort of retro bit of it, if you like, where that's got like brought back memories of the old car. The front end. Now, is it just me or does anyone else see the grinning Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland with this? Me? Maybe? No? You do as well? I think so. But I think the whole thing works. I really do. 
a huge big Volkswagen badge on the front there. As I say, this bluff front, you've got, of course, the light bar running into sort of like the sweeping back um, LED headlights that are standard on it that just curve around the side here. The two-tone paint really exaggerates that, as I say, sort of like the, the front here with the lower section with just some cooling down at the bottom because that's all it's needed. This bonnet does sort of tip forward but there's no storage in there. It's pure and simply for just gaining access to things like your washer fluid and some other ancillary. So there's no storage up at the front but as we'll see in practicality you don't really need any more storage in what this actually gives you. But from first acquaintance that face, wow, they've hit the ground running with this one. And round inside profile, you can see that sort of bluff front end. Now, as I say, normally I would kind of urge caution when it comes to expensive options, but I do like this two-tone paint, and I do think that's maybe something that gives the car a bit more of its character. Although I have to say, one all in black would look, well, how would the kids say? Gangster. Anyway, there we go. Um, this front quarter light, brilliant for forward visibility. I mean, again, great vision in the car, and you'll see that on the inside, how good you know the driving position is and the, like, the view out that you get on the car. You can see how far the wheels are pushed out to the side, and like, out to the, sorry, out to the extremities. And that's another thing with a bespoke EV platform that this sits on. It sits on the MEB platform, that it does give you that ability to really play around with the design. It gives the designers much more of a free range because you don't have, obviously, an engine and transmission to sort of like package in there. Standard on the car as you in the lead-in models, and again, we'll talk about trim levels later, will be 19-inch wheels. This is a mid-level style, which should get 20-inch wheels as standard, but this one's been optioned up with the 21-inch wheels, which I absolutely love, and it gives it a real kind of squat, purposeful look. Obviously, you get your nice sort of like front doors, front um, thingy doors, and then you get your rear kind of sliding ones, one on either side. Absolutely brilliant. Privacy glass on this model as well. The only thing that I'm not 100% convinced about is these kind of wee things here. They don't do anything. They're just little trim pieces that are stuck on. I'm not sure whether they're really necessary, but it's not enough to make me stop loving this car the way that it absolutely looks. And around the back, well, again, it's like the front. You've got this really kind of bluff kind of rear end to the thing. Makes the whole thing a real, just a box on four wheels, which is exactly what you want when it comes to carrying things. Um, the nice rear lights, the kind of LED rear lights. And again, it goes across in this light bar. Distinctive two-tone really works at the back as well as the front. Um, I love this cosmic blue uh, metallic paint as well. I know a lot of the press cars have been that kind of lime yellow, which I'm not 100% convinced, but I really like this because it's quite classy. Anyway, big Volkswagen logo at the back, like you get at the front. Still not keen on these stuck-on plastic letters. They still look like made things that kids stick on fridges, but you could take them off, I suppose, if you didn't really really want them. High-level brake light up there, as you can see, rear wiper, um, which you do need because, of course, with this bluff rear end, dirt just gets them absolutely attracted to it. Um, you've got little reversing camera there. And then the release for the boot lid is actually here rather than the badge. And it's all just neatly finished down at the bottom there. This is, as far as I'm concerned, Volkswagen's most successful design within the ID range and possibly within their own car range itself. I absolutely love the way that this thing looks. And as I say, irrespective of, of where I've been with this car, everyone who sees it just immediately falls in love with it. But what do you think? Have they gone too modern? Should they have been more retro? Is it too retro for you? Of course, as always, please let us know what you think in the comments down below. You want space, Ranger? Well, you've got it. Electric tailgate. And that there is 1,121 litres of boot space as standard. You drop the rear seats and it goes to, well, infinity and beyond at 2,205 litres. Will we get the auto EV suitcases in? Oh, what do you think? Of course we will. I mean, there's masses of room back here, even with this sort of like twin floor on it. I mean, you get that one in there. Where's a medium one? And that one down in there. It's like Jenga, this. You know, carry-ons there. There you go, there's enough space for more rucksacks and all sorts of paraphernalia on there as well. And of course, as I say, you've got this sort of floor floor where you've got these two little things that pull out for charging cables and bits and pieces like first aid kits and luggage nets and all the other bits and pieces that you could want to put in. I mean, it's brilliantly versatile when it comes to sort of like the rear space as well. And of course, if you do fold down those rear seats, 
they lie at a, a, a constant sort of like a, a level to this here. So you could sleep in there. You know, I mean, you could put like a block mattress in there and just kind of sleep down. Or if you're a serial killer or something, you know, you have plenty of things in there. That'd be brilliant. And you can also tow with it. You can option it with this electrically deployable tow bar, which you get here, and it'll tow up to a thousand kilos brake trailer. But probably for more use would be something like one of those kind of tow bar mounted bike racks like I've got. That's perfect for that. And we go to Cornwall a lot and you see loads of sort of like Volkswagen Caravels and Californias with the bike racks in the back. So it's an expensive option at £980, but it could well be worth it. See what I mean? Very, very versatile. Now, there's other little, little bits and pieces back here which are quite useful too. You've got a little hook on this side here for hanging bags off and a 12 volt socket. I also love these little ID Buzz logos embossed into the side bits here. And there is some storage up here. Now, there's a reason for that because the Buzz at the moment is only available as a five seater. But Volkswagen say they're going to be doing derivatives of it, so a slightly longer wheelbase version with seven seats, and I'm sure there will be camper vans and such like along very, very soon. However, you can buy the Buzz at the moment as the ID Buzz Cargo, so in other words, a panel van. So you butcher, baker and candlestick makers, you've not been forgotten about either. Now, entry into the rear is from twin sliding doors on the other side. You can option these as well, <coughs> excuse me, with power operation as well. So they'll move, um, they'll slide open and back um, under power if you want. Whether you feel it's necessary or not, I'm not 100% sure. Now, this is the only bit, whilst it's big back here, and I'm just about to show you that, this is the only bit that sort of falls apart a little bit for me in some respects. A couple of months ago, Volkswagen very kindly gave me um, a multivan. And I took my family, my wife, my daughter, and my mother um, from my home here in Surrey back up to my hometown in Scotland. And it was brilliant. You had a rear seat. Okay, it was a, a seven-seater, you could, but you could slide the seats backwards and forwards. You could remove them. Each one had an individual seat. They're all heated, and they came with sort of like, you know, sliding rails. Sorry, rails that they slid on, and you had a little table thing that could come out of. You don't get any of that with the Buzz. And I find that a little bit of a shame, if I'm honest with you. Anyway, <clears throat> rear accommodation is well plentiful as you can see and the seats themselves are actually very comfortable but they're not the individual style seats as I say that the multivan had which I feel is a little bit of a shame um, they do slide in fairness if I can find the handle but they slide in that 60-40 split that they come with and they will recline as well so you can recline them a little bit back to get a bit more comfort but as I say it just to be nice maybe to see them just a bit more versatility back here I don't know um, let me shut this door for a second because this is my other problem as well. Fixed rear window. There's not even, in the multivan you had a sliding panel that could open, which I feel is a real shame. And there's no vents back here. So on a hot day you're, you're hoping the air conditioning, the residual cooling air just comes from the front quite quickly. Um, or on cold days like this, you know, again, the hot air that's coming through quite quickly, there's no vents for the rear passengers, which I find odd. And as I say, that window doesn't open. Um, you've got a USB-C port charge in each side on the door. So that's good. So if your kids are charging up iPads um, or their phones or their little game consoles, you've got charging ability there. Um, and you've got these tables in the back, which again, go through two stages. So they can go like that, so you can just stick the iPad on so it's nice and easy for them to focus on or they're actually a table as well with a slightly useless recess for drinks. There's mat pockets on the backs of the seat and then these little pockets at the top again for just kind of sticking polaments in or um, the little games consoles or whatever. Um, Isofix points, yep, there's uh, two on either, sorry, one on either uh, outer seat so that's fine but none in the middle and as I say again because you had the multivan with the individual rear seats, all the rear seats had Isofix points, which again I thought was really good. And there's no ability to sort of like bring this, what they call the buzz box, which I'll show you when we're in the front, um, through into the rear so the rear people can use it. So I do feel there's a bit of a missed opportunity when it comes to the versatility of the buzz. And I'm a bit surprised at Volkswagen um, not really taking that on board and, and, and really go to town on this car because it, it's good back here it's really good but it could have been great okay so we jump up front and what do we have well again it's a part of the car where it's going to be quite divisive 
um, to us here at Auto EV. Um, but I'm, I am going to be honest with you and say I think it's the best interior that Volkswagen um, have done on an ID car. Um, I'll come on to that in a second, that screen in a second, because I don't want to labour the point about that too much. But let's start with the basics, which is the driving position, the, the seat comfort, which is superb. Now, this particular car is optioned with the Comfort Seat Package Art Velours. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it basically gives it a slightly different seat to the standard car. You get these adjustable armrests, which are on both sides, adjustable squab, and it's got this sort of nice kind of leatherette style material with this kind of woven fabric in the middle, which really feels nice and warm, and it, it holds you when you're, when you're driving around, and I really do like them. It is an expensive option, but it's one I would probably tick, if I'm honest with you, because I really do like these seats. They are superb. And the driving position is excellent. You've got this lovely big commanding view. Nothing interrupts your view forward. So the screen's down there, um, the driver binnacle's there. You've got these front quarter lights, as I said earlier, that give you great visibility when you're coming up to things. And you do feel that you know you are sitting kind of at the front of the car, even though there is still a bit more to go. So I really do like it. I think the driving position is superb. The use of materials as well needs a little bit of a mention. So as well as that um, optional seat with it, the thing, this silver butch veneer, which obviously isn't real silver butch, but it looks really nice and just lifts the ambience of the interior quite a bit. Um, so that's the good part, and, what, and I'm, the other good part is storage, which I'm going to come on to in a second. Um, there's a couple of other little things worth mentioning, which is it still uses this very small driver's binnacle here. Now, I've been talking about this a lot, and I kind of did, I sort of liked it at first, the fact that it's on the column and it moves with the column on the other ID cars. But having lived with the Cupra Born that we did with our long-term test car, which is a similar thing, there's not enough information on it for me which means you've got to rely on this a bit too often, which is still the Achilles heel of this interior. This awful infotainment system that Volkswagen insists on fitting to cars is just dreadful. It is, they've had updates, and I'm sure there will be more, so it's not quite as laggy as it was, but it's still just awful. I just don't like it at all. You'd still get these ridiculous um, slider controls that aren't illuminated at night. There's still too many... Um, functions to go through before you get something basic like the climate, you've got to press a button, then the climate comes up, then you've got to go into it. And it is really confusing. You've got smart climate, classic climate, air care. Why do we need all of that? Why isn't it just normal climate control? And you can switch it on and off with the button up there. So it's actually, when I actually switch it on, it's not on. You've got to then physically switch it on again. There's too many steps. There's too many steps to get, do stuff, basic stuff. Um, Again, you sort of like we you know things like on this car you've got the heated seats and heated steering wheel, which is nice. But again, the heated steering wheel is fitted with these ridiculous touch sensitive controls, which I just don't think work. Um, w at the same time, we've had this car, we've had a Skoda Enyaq Coupe VRS, and my wife's been driving the Enyaq quite a lot. Now, she hates this system that we had in the Cupra. She always says there's too many things to go through on it. The Skoda system is superb in comparison with that. And the Skoda gives you physical controls on the steering wheel. You've got this little thumb wheel to adjust volume. Um, again, for you know physical buttons you have to press. The climate control is always physically on. You don't have to go into another screen to get it on. It's there. And she said, why can't the Volkswagen be like that? And again, I don't understand. I don't know why Volkswagen just don't admit defeat with this and fit something from, say, Skoda or Audi, because it's just dreadful. Anyway, I'm not going to harp on about it. I've said enough about it in all the other road tests. But it, it, it is just, ah, just, no, don't like it. Right, OK, enough's enough. Controls, right, the difference here is you don't have the rotary transmission control like you do in the other ID card. It's now on a column stock, which uh, it takes a bit of getting used to at first, but actually I don't mind. So it's like the old kind of Mercedes where you've got the transmission lever effectively is the one on the right hand side. And then you've got one stock on this side that does uh, indicators, wipers um, and lights. So that's fine. I don't mind that so much. And actually, once you kind of know it's there and you get used to where all the functions are, I'm quite cool with that. That's fine. Yeah, you get some little ancillary controls down the side here for the, 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 the maximum defrost. Again, why is, there a, why is the maximum defrost and the rear screen defrost over here and it's not in the climate menu? Why is it on the separate panel over here? Silly. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, storage. 
Oh, brilliant. There's a little cubby here on the right. There's a wireless charging pad down in there for the mobile with two USB-C um, ports there. You get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in the car as well, which is brilliant. You've got this brilliant um, uh, tray in front of the front passenger for, for chucking iPads in or whatever. Plus, obviously, you then got the, the glove box down below, which is, which is ample in size. You've got two door bins, effectively. You've got an upper one and then a much lower one. And in the door on the passenger side, you've got another USB-C port. So again, if your passenger was using a games console or whatever, then they've, they've got the ability to sort of plug that in there. The little, <laughs> the little screw covers um, on the trim, they've got little smiley faces on them, little emoji faces on them. I really like that, it's quite neat. Um, my only quibble about the storage is that some areas are lined, like the upper parts are lined, but the lower parts aren't, and I don't know why. That seems a bit cheap to me. It's a bit cost-cutting, Volkswagen. Stop doing it. Um, you know, put rubber in all the door bins, because if you drop your keys down into the lower door bin, they just rattle around, and it's not ideal. You've got this um, thing here, this uh, cup holder thing here that folds out, which is lovely. So you've got, effectively, a flat floor here. That just folds up into the dash, and they fold down. And uh, but my big coffee flask and my big water bottle, they go in there. And this, what I was talking about earlier, this buzz box, which has a drawer at the back, he says, which does slide out, because I have used it before. And I don't know, there you go, it's sliding out there. And a little drawer at the front, a little bin at the front, which you pull up, he says, and that flips down, there we go, with more storage in here for things like sunglasses and... That is an ashtray. I don't know why people put ashtrays in cars. Ice scraper, which you can then take out, put in there. There's another thing back here, another divider that's a bottle hole, a bottle opener, and you can vary the sort of like you know the things in there. And again, it's nicely and rubber lined in there. But as I say, that would be brilliant if that was on a rail that you could slide back to let the rear passengers use it. But it's not. You can take it out completely. You can remove it completely if you want to. Um, to give you a walk-through access, but I just think it'd be nice if it was on a rail that you could slide um, backwards and forwards. I don't know why they haven't done it. They do it in the multivan, and it works really, really well. I like it. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, it's a real mixed bag for me up here. But on the whole, if you were to put a gun to my head, then I would say it's a really successful interior. If they could just change that, and then you see, go and buy some rubber matting and stuff and cut it and, and then stick it down in the bottom of the door bins, then it's absolutely fine. The only thing, again, I'd maybe say is this is obviously a family car, um, which means you're going to have children in here. And I don't think this colour of upholstery would stand, the, stand the, the, the rigors of having children in it. And I've had children in the car this week, and yeah, they've, they've had to be told to be very, very careful with what they're doing and what they're eating and such likes. So I'm not sure that this is probably the best color for this interior, but there you go. But as a whole, it is absolutely brilliant up here. I really, really like it. If that was different, if that was a different system, then I would really find it hard to pick absolute fault with it. There are quibbles, as I say, that ability for that not to move around a bit more. Um, and as I say, the kind of lining in the lower halves. The fit and finish is good. It's probably the best that I've seen on an ID. I don't think it's as good as the Skoda, as the Enyaq, um, and some of the other cars that are, you know, again, especially when it comes to the price of the car. And it's not a Volkswagen quality of old, but it's it's good. That's where I'll leave that. There's a lot of sustainability in terms of the materials used as well. That's an important point to make. So they've really focused on sustainability with the materials. And I love the fact it's not leather. Um, you know, you get this, as I say, this nice kind of warm fabric. But just don't option it in this white colour. That's all I'd say. So the Buzz is fitted with Volkswagen 77 kilowatt hour battery, which should give, according to WLTP figures, a range of up to 255 miles. But with the weather that we're experiencing at the moment and just with experience that I've had with the car, you're probably looking more in the region of around about 200 to 220 miles. So not dreadful, but not brilliant either, if I'm honest with you. Efficiency could maybe be slightly better, if I'm being completely honest with you. Now, it will take charging speeds up to 170 kilowatts, meaning that you can go from a 10 to 80% benchmark from one of those 170 kilowatt chargers that we're seeing more of in the public network in around about 30 minutes. So again, the sort of benchmark time as you'd expect. 
The car also comes with 11 kilowatt three phase onboard charging as standard. So if you do have the more powerful 11 kilowatt wall box at home or at your work, then what you'll be looking at is a zero to full time in around about seven and a half hours. Or if it's a more likely seven kilowatt wall box you have at home, then charging up from flat to full will be pushed out to around about 11 and a half hours. Now to drive, the buzz is actually really good. I've got to admit, it's quite surprising how nice this actually is to drive. Uh, there's one motor available, which is a 204 PS motor, and that gets you to, and it's mounted at the rear, so it's rear wheel drive, and that gets you to 60 miles an hour in just over 10 seconds, which is enough. I mean, yeah, okay, you might say you might want it a little bit faster, but actually, do you know what? In a family car, how much quicker do you want to actually go? Now, as I say, it's a single motor, uh, at the moment, there is talk. Sorry, it's a very noisy Mustang by me. And um, there is talk of a dual motor version uh, becoming available. As I say, there's going to be lots of other derivatives um, of the Buzz uh, going forward now, and I think that's a good thing. But I do hope that Volkswagen um, call the twin motor version the Synchro. They revive the Synchro badge because that'd be quite cool, I think. Um, but let's go back to the drive. It's um, in terms of its performance, it's absolutely fine. I don't have a, an issue with it not being any quicker than that. I'm perfectly happy with it. It's beautifully smooth. That's the one thing I will say, and it's really refined. You've got that lovely elevated driving position. So if you're coming from the likes of an SUV um, and you're moving into this, um, you're going to be um, you're not going to feel short change because you do sit really nicely high up. You've got great visibility around you. It's not, you've got to really get the idea of a van out of your head because it's not a van-like position at all. Um, when I had the multi-van uh, a couple of months ago, um, it was much the same. It's a bit more van-like in its driving position, but even that feels like a car. This goes another stage further. This feels really like you're just sitting in a big car. Um, and that's exactly how you feel. You do not feel like you're sitting in any style of commercial vehicle whatsoever. So I love that about it. I mentioned the seats. Um, these are the optional seats, but I, I, and they are expensive. They come as a big pack, but I have to admit, it's an option I would probably be tempted to tell you to tick because the comfort that you get from these seats is amazing. Um, they've got these fold down armrests, you know, for longer drives, they're really comfortable. They hold you in just the right places. Um, you've got this front squab, which you can pull out to give you a bit more support under the thighs, which you know obviously I like. You can adjust the steering column for reach and rake, the little binnacle moves with it. Um, all the controls fall easily to hand. And as I said to you in the interior bit, they've moved the transmission selector from the binnacle here to this column stock. So once you kind of get used to that being there, um, then it's absolutely fine. And again, it come, becomes a second kind of nature to you. Um, the rest of the controls are very, very easy to sort of like find and to use. So there's no problem with sort of like, you know, sort of like getting controls. You don't have to reach around for anything or anything like that or, you know, or anything down here. Everything falls nice and easily to hand. The steering's good. Um, I like the steering. It, it's got a nice feel to it. Again, there's not... Um, there's not an artificialness to it. It, 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 you know, you can feel the wheels turn, you know where they're pointing. Now you do have different driving modes in the Buzz as well, like you do with most other cars. Um, and there's the button down here for it, and you press mode that comes up, and it's Eco, Comfort, Sport and Individual. And I've been sort of like going between Comfort and Sport. There's not a massive amount of difference, if I'm honest with you. So popping it into Sport doesn't all of a sudden turn it into a Buzz GTI. It won't do that. So don't be fooled by that sport tag. And I probably would avoid it, if I'm honest with you. Just leave it in comfort, or, or eco if you want it, um, and let it do its business. Now the brakes, I'm going, to take, I'm going to take slight issue with the brakes, if I'm honest with you. Not much. Um, you've got Volkswagen's regen system, where you've got, um, on the rotary transmission lever, where you've got D, and then you can flick it to B, where you get that more aggressive one-pedal driving which is absolutely fine, oh, hang on, um, which is absolutely fine. But when you use the actual pedal itself, if you're in the drive mode, you, you're out of B and you press on the pedal, it sort of bites and then it fades and then it bites again. It's a weird thing and it only really happens at sort of more lower town speed. On higher speed, the brakes seem okay, but for some reason, and I don't know why, as I say, when I'm being kind of just manoeuvring around town, 
and you've just got that initial, as I say, pedal feel where you, you, you touch the pedal and as I say, it breaks but then it almost seems like it comes off and then it breaks again. It's a bit weird and I'm not sure what it's doing that for, I'm not sure why and I'm not sure why maybe other people haven't picked up on that but that's how I feel with it. You can drive around it and as I say, just by being a bit firmer on the brakes or using the B mode um, and as I say, you certainly don't feel it at higher speed, you know, if you're on the motorway or whatever and you, you apply the brakes, it's absolutely fine. It's just that more kind of local drive, just there, the car in front of me stopped and I've just braked and it feels like it kind of lets off and then bites again. Just a bit odd, I don't know why. But anyway, there we go. Other than that, I absolutely love this car. I absolutely love it. I, I genuinely wanted to view this completely dispassionately and I have done in a lot of ways. And as I say, I've picked fault with it. It isn't perfect. As I say, the interior, it, you know, there's bits of it. They could have done a lot, but it feels like they kind of just, they set off with an idea and then went, oh, no, we can't do that because that's on the multivan and we shouldn't do that. I wish they'd done it. I wish they'd just been a bit more, do you know what, let's just throw everything at it. Sliding seats and captain's chairs that can swivel and all the rest of it. Because there's no reason you can it's an EV platform. You're starting from a clean sheet of paper. Why not do it like that? And they haven't. And I'm a bit disappointed that they haven't. But it doesn't detract from the fact that this thing puts a massive grin on your face. And everyone else who sees it just loves it. People are coming up to me and talking to me about it. They're going, God, look at it. It's fabulous. Love the way that it looks. It's just a brilliant car. And it is. As a family car... It's, it's, it's brilliant, uh, you know, and this is coming from somebody who loves SUVs and who drives an SUV as his family car. This is excellent. I love this. I'm getting a bit giddy now. I need to stop that. Sensible road tester face on time. Love it. It's brilliant. Now, for the bad news. It's not going to be a cheap car, this. There's basically three trim levels you can have in the buzz at the moment. That starts with the life trim level at just over £57,000. This is the mid-spec style that I have at just under £62,000. Or you can move up to the first edition car at £62,995. But this car's got quite a few options on it, so bear with me while I go through that with you. Um, and they are quite pricey options as well. So this two-tone paint that we were talking about earlier, that's £1,800 alone. The electric tow bar, as I say, is £980. The comfort seat package with the Art Velour thing is £2,305. So it's very easy to get the price of this car up. Um, without even thinking about it, if I'm being honest with you. This particular car optioned up is £69,265 as tested, and of course these prices are correct at the time of filming. Now, as I say, there's going to be more derivatives of the Buzz. There's going to be maybe camper vans, longer wheelbase versions, and but you can also buy, as I mentioned earlier, as a panel van, as a car, so the ID Buzz Cargo, which obviously starts at a slightly lower price. So maybe if you're doing a camper conversion, perhaps, that's maybe the one you'd maybe start with. But yeah, as I say, looking this good doesn't come cheap. But the other thing that you have to take into consideration when we're talking about price and, and in value is residual values. Because this car is going to retain, I think, a huge amount of its value because of what it is, because of the way that it looks. And it's those cars we've seen in the past, the Audi TT, the Porsche 911 GT3s, you know, things like that, that do retain a huge amount of values. Cars that are desirable, they do retain a huge amount of their value. So if you're looking at a finance package, that is where you're going to win there because its residual value will be quite high. And obviously if you're buying the car and then you're maybe looking to move on in two or three years' time, especially with supply the way that it is at the moment, then again, you might not be as worse off as you think you might be. The only real downside when it comes to sort of like overall ownership is Volkswagen still insists on just a three-year warranty with the vehicle. When some of the competitors, especially the ones coming from Korea and the Far East, they're looking at seven years at least on their warranties. So Volkswagen, you do need to up your game when it comes to that. So what could you view as competition for the ID Buzz? Well, it depends how you really view the car, I suppose. If you see it as like an MPV, and then you're going to be looking at things like the Mercedes-Benz EQV. That's its probably its closest driver, albeit that's a bit bigger and it's got seven seats. 
but it is a sort of big family people carrier. Um, in that way, if you do look at it as an MPV, then maybe you might consider things like the Citroen E-Space Tourer and its equivalents in Peugeot and Vauxhall. But I have to say, those three cars are a bit more perfunctory in their sort of like approach, and they don't have the kind of design and the panache of the ID Buzz, and certainly not the luxury of the likes of the Mercedes. Volkswagen might want you to consider it instead of something like a, a sort of lifestyle SUV. So therefore, at this price point, you're looking at things like the BMW iX3, uh, Volvo's XC40 Recharge, and of course, Mercedes-Benz EQB, which you can have as a seven-seat option as well. But there is a more natural rival, albeit one that's not fully electric, and it comes from within Volkswagen itself, and that is the multivan. Um, which is available as a plug-in hybrid. And whilst it doesn't have the design and the panache of the Buzz, it certainly trumps it a bit for practicality and versatility. But irrespective of what you see as competition for this car, there's no denying that with this sort of face, this sort of design, this sort of style about it, it is making its own way and making its own mark. So here's what we like and what we don't like about the new Volkswagen ID Buzz. We like its design, its practicality, it's spacious, it's actually good to drive, and the ownership fun factor. We don't like the dreadful Volkswagen infotainment system. The range could ideally do with being a little bit better. The interior isn't as versatile as we would like to have seen, and it is quite expensive, especially when you start putting on some options. As I said right at the start of this video, this is Volkswagen's TT moment. Because if you remember when Audi launched that small compact coupe way back in 1999, it was so desirable, so cool looking. It didn't really matter that actually it was quite dynamically flawed and it didn't really offer particularly great value for money. And that didn't really matter. People wanted it, you desired it, you wanted to own it. And it's the same with the Buzz. Now, don't get me wrong, it is good to drive. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it isn't good to drive. In fact, in some respects, it's probably my favourite of all the ID cars. It's not perfect, though. You know, let's not actually, you know, we did say that it, we wouldn't view it on a style kind of just basis. We had to view it as a sort of, you know, a, a, a proper road test. And we had to take every single facet of the car into consideration. And we have done, as I say, and it isn't perfect it's not as versatile as i'd like to have seen that interior as i say if you look at something like volkswagen's own multivan it is as brilliant on the inside as it is dull to look at on the outside and i kind of wanted the buzz to be like that because if it had been it would have taken it from being a really good car to being a really great family car but irrespective of all of that i can't help but judge this car on everything else and the way that it makes you feel. Everybody who's seen this car, from my daughter and her friends who were just jumping up and down to get inside it the other day because they thought it looked brilliant, to my wife who just fell about laughing when she saw it, she said it's one of the coolest things that she'd ever seen, to my X5 driving Porsche owning brother-in-law who even he said, wow, that just looks amazing, to my 81-year-old father-in-law who just fell in love with it, to my friend and his kids who just love it. It is one of those cars that when people see it, they just absolutely fall in love with. And it's hard not to fall under its charms. It is a car that you will buy with your heart and not your head. And there is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. The brilliant thing about the new Volkswagen ID Buzz is the way that this car does make you feel. And you don't need those rose-tinted spectacles to see that. Thank you for watching another episode of Auto EV. As always, please remember to make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And once you've done that, press the little bell button down below so you'll be notified of when our next video goes live. If you've enjoyed the review, please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and leave us some comments down below. What do you think of the new ID Buzz? Am I wrong? Should I have judged it a bit more dispassionately? Or have you fallen under the spell and the charm of this wonderful little Volkswagen? 
Remember, we're across all social media platforms as well. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So please do give us a follow there as well because every little bit helps. And if you have enjoyed this review and you want to watch a little bit more and find out more about Auto EV, then stick in our YouTube channel because there's now well over 100 videos on there, which include road test reviews, twin tests, used car reviews, van reviews, electric icons, and even motorbike reviews from our guest presenter, Charlie Berman. All that remains for me to say is thank you once again for watching and supporting the channel, and I'll see you again soon. So, you've watched our video. It's now my job to tell you to like and subscribe, and press the little bell button to receive notification of when our next video is uploaded.